Okay, in this video we will be uh, going over acid-base chemistry, uh, explaining the concepts in a very short video. So, whenever you have an acid, your acid will normally dissociate. So the acid will dissociate to give you the conjugate base plus a proton. It will lose a proton. And there is a difference between proton this is called a proton which is a hydrogen with no electrons and the normal hydrogen that we know from the periodic table and the hydride which is an which is a hydrogen that has an extra electron so the hydride is a hydrogen with extra electron this is the, just the hydrogen and this is the proton that is just a hydrogen with no electrons so when the acid dissociates, it will become a conjugate base and it will release a proton. <clears throat> so your acid constant, the equilibrium constant, will equal to the concentration of your conjugate base times the concentration of the proton divided by the concentration of the acid. This is how you determine the Ka, but the pKa, which equals to minus log Ka. So this is how we measure the strength of acidity. So if I have a very high Ka, that means I have a lot of dissociation. That means I have a strong acid and therefore a small pKa. So strong acid will have a high Ka and will have a small pKa and vice versa. So how does a strong acid behave? So a strong acid normally will fully, will pretty much fully dissociate in water, for example, will fully dissociate to a large extent in water and therefore you will have Ka to be much larger than 1. If your Ka is larger than 1, then your log Ka will be greater than zero. Therefore, your pKa will be less than zero. So it's gonna be in the negative, and that's for a strong acid. For a weak acid, which dissociates to a very small extent in H2O solution. And therefore, your Ka will be less than 1, so your log Ka will be less than 0, and therefore your pKa will be more than 0. So, whenever you see a very small pKa in the negative region, that means it's a strong acid. Whenever you see a pKa much greater than 0, that means it's a weak acid. So pKa factors, those are the factors that you need to use in order to evaluate the strength of an acid. And pKa factors come in five letters that can make acronym. They are five factors, so the acronym makes the word cardio and start with a charge. So when you look at H2O and H3O+, plus, and you just like, you know, check the pKa values for these ones, H2O has a pKa value of like 16. H3O has a pKa value of like minus 2. What makes this pKa value so low? That means H3O, which is the hydronium ion, is very acidic. What makes this molecule set the price for the proton to be so low? A very, very small pKa means this molecule is really willing to lose a proton for any very weak base. So a very weak or a very small pKa value means a very acidic proton. It means the molecule will do anything to lose the proton. So H3O plus, you have an electronegative atom with a positive charge that makes the oxygen like going crazy. So it would like to lose the positive charge immediately by losing one of the protons. So it makes the proton become very acidic, minus two. And that's for the charge pretty much, a positive charge on electro negative atom will just make it go crazy. If you compare NH3 to NH4+, 
you have here like 33 compared to like 9 or 10 of this one this is a big difference between these two and that's because the positive charge on the nitrogen makes the nitrogen really unhappy and unstable so it would like to do anything to lose a proton that's for the first one the second factor comes to the atom so if you look at electronegativity which is part of the atom factor and for example compare when you have CH4 NH3 H2O and HF compare these four you will find the pKa for methane roughly 50 and ammonia roughly 33 water like 16 HF like 3.2 what makes the pKa goes down and if you if you really think about it you have carbon 6 nitrogen 7 oxygen 8 fluorine 9 they are in the same row in the periodic table so there's some kind of trend going on and it's the electronegativity so when CH4 loses a proton becomes CH3 minus and then the carbon will have a negative charge it's not a happy because it's not the electronegative NH3 becomes NH2 minus now nitrogen will light would like to have a negative charge so the pKa goes down H2O upon losing a proton will become OH minus then oxygen would like to have that negative charge because it's electronegative atom fluorine which is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table upon losing a proton will become F minus and that will make the F so happy the fluorine and therefore it has a very small pKa value so pKa goes down that means the proton these protons become more and more acidic going from the left to the right with increase in the electronegativity the second factor in atom factor in cardio the pKa factors is the size compare H2O to H2S for example you're gonna find water has a pKa of around 16 while H2S has a pKa of around 10 lose the proton from water you will have OH minus lose the proton from H2S you will have SH minus what's going on here oxygen is smaller in size than sulfur sulfur has a bigger surface area so the charge the negative charge will be more distributed on a bigger space and this will make it more polarizable so polarizability is a factor in the size of the atom so whenever you compare between O oxygen and sulfur sulfur will always have the most acidic proton compared to the oxygen in water so you have H2S C and H2O H2S will be more acidic than H2O and even if you compare uh, CH3 OH to CH3 SH the same that will be more acidic easy to lose in the sulfur side more than the oxygen side if you look at the third factor resonance just to understand it use examples and compare we have CH3 OH here we have CH3 CO OH okay when I lose that proton and I lose that proton to see the stability of conjugate bases this one will have a CH3 O minus this one is going to have CH3 CO O minus okay so the methanol the CH3 OH has a pKa of around 16 while the acetic acid has a pKa of around 5 why it is the same charge it's the same atom but one charge can be delocalized this negative charge can just make a double bond and break the double bond to give you a resonance structure like this and therefore you are stabilizing the negative charge by delocalization so this is called delocalized negative charge while this is called localized negative charge which is not as stable as the delocalized one so always negative charges would like to be delocalized that will provide further stability in addition to the oxygen being electronegative would like to have a negative charge but we would like to see this negative charge gain distributed over multiple atoms because resonance provides stability the fourth factor when they compared CH3 
three C O O H to C F three C O O H. They found that the acetic acid has a pKa of five, and this acid, trifluoroacetic acid, has a pKa of, of uh, has a pKa of three point two. Roughly three point two. So wh what's going on here? Why this pKa is much lower than this pKa, even though these two, you just look, lose the proton, lose the proton, you will have CH three, CO. O minus, you have CF three, CO O minus. These just like you know started to investigate, and they found that it's the same charge, the same oxygen atom, both have resonance. So what's the difference? Well, this carbon has three hydrogens on it, while this carbon has three fluorines. Each fluorine is much more electronegative than the carbon. And this is going to cause the following, a big uh, partial positive charge on this carbon here. And partial negative charges on these fluorines, the oil taking the electrons from the carbon, making the carbon so electron deficient with a very big partial positive charge. Well, partial positive charge next to the electron density, which is moving up and down, this is going to stabilize the negative charge on the oxygen. So it's not only a negative charge on electronegative atom and resonance, it's a further stabilization by induction here from the pos partial positive charge on the carbon. So always pay attention to that whenever you see any electronegative atoms on the adjacent carbon connected to your uh, area of reaction here where, where it has the acidic proton, then you just like find the partial positive charge which is going to provide further stabilizations. All these wording are so important in rational questions because we can ask you what's the difference and why there's a difference in the pKa values between this one here is 5 and this one here is like almost 3.2. Differences like here, you have induction, the partial positive charge provides further stability to this negative charge. The last factor, orbital, they compared CH4 to C2H6, to C2H2, and they were surprised. And that's four, sorry. C CH4, C2H4, and C2H2. And they were surprised because the pKa for methane is roughly 50. For alkene, this one is alkene, which is the C2H4, is roughly 30s in the 30s, while this one, the C2H2, roughly in the 20s. As you can see, I don't remember the exact value. I'm just trying to provide a comparison between these ones. So CH4 represents alkanes. C2H4 represents alkenes. C2H2 represents alkynes. So alkanes are in the range from 45 to 60. Alkenes in the range from 30s to 40s. Alkynes, 25 to 30s. Why this is happening? Why there is like, like a trend in the pKa? There is no negative charge on any electronegative atom. The all carbons, you know, even electronegative. There are no resonances, no difference in size of the carbon atoms, no induction. But think about it. The hybridization of the CH4 is sp3. That's the only difference between these guys. Hybridization of this one is sp2. Hybridization of this one is sp. So sp3 is a bigger in size orbital than sp2, a little bit smaller than sp, a little bit smaller. So when I lose a proton, I will have a negative charge in the sp3 orbital. When I lose a proton, I'm going to have a negative charge in the sp2 orbital. When I lose a proton, I'm going to have a negative charge in the sp orbital. sp3, it's orbiting the nucleus, which has the positive charge. Each one of them doing the same thing. sp3, bigger in size, the negative charge is not going, is not going to be as close as possible to the nucleus. So it's not that stabilized by the positive charge in the nucleus. In the case of sp2, the negative charge is an sp2 orbital, which is smaller in size 
than sp3 so it's closer to the nucleus so it's more stabilized so that will bring down the pka value sp you have the negative charge in sp orbital which is the smallest and therefore it's the closest to the nucleus which has a positive charge and that will provide a lot of stability to this molecule which will make it acetylenes or all alkynes much more acidic than alkenes than alkanes because of the stability of the negative charge whenever you find something has a higher pka that means it doesn't want to lose the proton and become a conjugate base because it's not stable when it has a very small pka that means it's okay with losing the proton because it can stabilize and handle the negative charge so let's see an example on on this one a question like that will be identify the most acidic proton so you look at the molecule within the molecules identify the most acidic proton within the molecule you look at this one and then you never compare the acidic protons to each other think about it if I lost this uh, H here the proton what I'm gonna do I will have here this molecule with a negative charge here so it's on carbon it's not electronegative atom but there can be resonance it's in conjugation with the pi system okay so this one can be stabilized what about this one if I lost it what's gonna happen well if you lose that proton you will gain this molecule and it will be a negative charge on carbon which is not in conjugation with any pi system therefore no stabilization to it so it's just localized on carbon this is so bad it's very very high in pka so whenever you have a base that will decide to deprotonate it will go and look for the most accessible acidic proton the acidic proton is the more reactive proton it wants to be lost so it wants to be lost so it scans the molecule and then scans here if i lose that i'll take it you will have a negative charge which will be delocalized this is going to happen so this is what's going to happen the other example compare these two protons to each other and which one will be more acidic well if I lose this and I lose this let's do it if I lose this one I will have this molecule O negative charge and then you have here this molecule O negative charge chlorine chlorine this is this is just your rough work on the side to see which one is more acidic why would, would one of them actually be more acidic than the other one? Well, think about it. In both cases, the, it's a negative charge. In both cases, you have oxygen that has the negative charge. So electronegativity and atom is just the same. Size is the same because it's the same atom. Resonance, both have resonance. So it's not even a factor. What's going on? This one is closer to chlorines, which is directly connected to this system the chlorines more electronegative than the carbon which will cause a big partial positive charge close to the system which will provide a stabilization to this negative charge and it's closer to this more than this here it's directly connected to this one here it's one carbon away from this one which means this one will be more stable than this system so that makes this proton more acidic so here we have this proton more acidic, here we have this proton more acidic. One last example. Now, which one of these three protons will be more acidic? Well, let's see. It's uh, First, you have to compare electronegativity to see oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur than nitrogen. Perfect. Sulfur is bigger. Whenever it comes to comparison between sulfur and oxygen, use the argument that sulfur is bigger in size it's more polarizable and therefore its proton is more acidic it's more willing to lose the proton than oxygen it's going to be number two and this is three so if you were about to rank them this is the most acidic this is the second most acidic this is the third most acidic between two and three comes the electronegativity factor between one and two comes the polarizability factor thanks for watching